Hello and welcome to News Click. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the recent ceasefire agreement in Syria. And uh, for that we have Prabir Purkaistha, editor in chief News Click. Uh, so Prabir, if you could tell us what what is different about this ceasefire agreement than the previous one, seeing how they failed the previous ceasefires. Well, you're right. The previous ceasefires agreement generally ended up not being successful. They held for some time, maybe a few days, sometimes a couple of weeks, but really didn't hold. And what is different this time is an important question. I think the first and the most important part is it's been worked out without the United States. This is really an agreement which is being done between Turkey, Russia, Syria and Iran. In fact, Syria was not directly a participant in the discussion. It was really Iran, uh, Russia and Turkey which negotiated the ceasefire with, of course, both the sides. Clearly, Al-Qaeda affiliate what is used to be Jabhat al-Nusra, now Fateh al-Sham, is not a part of the party to the agreement, neither is ISIS. This is what the Russians as well as the uh, Iranians and the Syrians have said. Interestingly enough, the rebels have said no, they should be a part of this agreement. So there is already a point of discord whether this agreement covers the rebels as well as Al-Qaeda forces and uh, what are being called rebels and whether it, it does it does not. So that's an open question. So there is a possibility this will not hold. But the important part I think is that this time it's Turkey which has really uh, changed sides. Earlier it used to be with the Western powers, it used to be Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, Gulf uh, uh, Emirates, all this Gulf states. So there is a change of the part of the correlation of forces outside Syria as it were, which has directly influenced Syria because this is in some sense a proxy war. It's a war which has been done against Bashar al-Assad's government by a whole range of forces including NATO powers as well as the local uh, Gulf monarchies which have been behind this with of course also Israel support. So the fact that Turkey has changed is I think the significant part of it. Will the ceasefire hold? open question. So what are the areas do you think where the ceasefire will hold and where all it can fail? Well, I think it's a, it's a, there, are, there are four distinct areas we can talk about in terms of, shall we say, the larger strategic uh, moves in Syria. One is near Damascus, the southwest part of uh, Syria. In that part, it does appear that the major players are the so-called Free Syrian Army, rebels, and Al-Qaeda is not as strong as it is in other areas, or ISIS is not as strong as it is in other areas. So this is an area which looks like could be some could be a place where the ceasefire would hold, and the rebels would actually lay down their arms, come into some kind of strategic understanding with the Syrian government, and would slowly be in that sense uh, assimilated in some way into a new setup. So there is a possibility in these areas that you will actually have the ceasefire hold. Now there are pockets where ISIS is there, Al-Qaeda is there and so on. And there are pockets which have been independent rebel areas, which have been very close to Saudis uh, and so on. But at the same time, given the turn of events after Aleppo's fall, I think they are all beginning to recognize that the Assad government is here to stay, it's not going to fall. And if it doesn't fall, then they can go on fighting, but they're not really going to achieve anything. And at the same time, with the Syrian air force, the Russian air force having control over the skies, increasingly the turn of the battle is turning against them. So I think that's an area where you're likely to see some resolution. Eastern Syria, that's where the ISIS is in control, which is largely desert, this is really going to see how the Russians, the Americans uh, play this among themselves. Because the Americans have now backed the Iraqis in Mosul, which is their joining area, to the eastern, eastern part of Syria. So what happens in Mosul, what happens in Raqqa, what happens in Deir Assur, are in some sense linked because this is where the ISIS really holds sway. And this is an area where it's continuing to shrink, but ISIS still is powerful over there. The other part of it, and I'll come to the most difficult part later, other part of it is northern Aleppo, what's the whole northern belt of Syria, where the Kurds and the Turks as well as the Syrian government and the ISIS are in battle in different ways. And in this, the Turkish interest at the moment seems to be north of Aleppo or northern part of Aleppo uh, the governorate, uh, 
uh, that that part of it, if we look, it does appear that Turkey and Russia have reached some agreement among themselves that this part Turkey would and its rebel allies would hold sway, and ISIS will be eliminated from that part. At the same time, the Turks, the Kurdish northern part, which if that part falls also to the Kurds, become one contiguous area, which is what they call the Rojava uh, state or Rojava. Uh, some entity called Rojava that will not take place because the Kurds then would not have a contiguous area. So this is the this is something which is between the Kurds, Turks, and the Syrian government that is being worked out. It seems by which the status quo would see Turks play some role in in northern Aleppo. The last and the most difficult is where the so-called rebel forces are mixed with Al Qaeda very closely. It has a Haral Sham, which is really what we call Al Qaeda light, and that's again wants a Sharia-based state, very close to what the ideology of the Al Qaeda really is. So Haral Al Sham and Al Qaeda are the leading military force in Idlib, which is the last bastion of the rebels, so to say, in northwest of Aleppo, and that area is where we are likely to see that the, the so-called uh, true ceasefire really break down. No ceasefire of eastern Syria where the ISIS is there. Everybody agrees that there is no ceasefire there. Northern Aleppo, yes, a ceasefire which can hold. Southwestern uh, Syria where ceasefire can hold. It includes homes, Hama, townships and so on where slowly the rebels would lay down arms and get assimilated. And Idlib is the place where it appears the ceasefire will not hold and we are likely to see further uh, war continuing over there. So you mentioned that th this is the first time that US has not been part of the ceasefire agreement. So what do you think uh, the uh, America's role would be in the future of Syria? Now that's a very important question. I think that's the biggest change that we are seeing right now. That till now the Western powers including the United States, which is of course the leader of the Western bloc, has called the shots. Whether it's a UN uh, negotiations, the negotiations that were carried out earlier in, uh, in Saudi Arabia with all the parties. It's really the West which has called the shots and has been and tried at least to put everybody together as it appeared, in which one of the major demands used to be Bashar al-Assad has to go. That's how most of these negotiations really did not bear any fruit. The first time that you see the United States has virtually lost its place in the negotiations for ceasefire, ceasefire, and so it does. It does seem that it is increasingly becoming irrelevant in the civil war that is going on or the proxy war in Syria. Now that is a significant change from whatever we have seen in the past. I don't think it's possible for the United States to be or the West to be completely squeezed out of Syria for the simple fact that they are players. They are supplying arms. They have supplied in the past what are called man pads. They have supplied anti-tank missiles, which are in the control of ISIS. Large part of it is fallen to ISIS or to Al Qaeda forces. So they will still remain spoilers. Their ability to spoil anything that happens in the region is there, including, as we knew, uh, we know now earlier that ISIS itself was partly the product of the American policies, either of uh, benign neglect letting it happen or of active connivance. So this has been the US policies in the region to keep it fragmented, break it up, not have a continuous so-called Shia axis, which is Iran, Iraq, Syria and Hezbollah. So all of these policies now would see that the United States is not a part of what is going to happen in Syria in terms of an active direction, but nevertheless could be a spoiler. And if it acts as a spoiler, then it can keep the civil war or the, uh, the current war that is going on also for some time by either not coming out against ISIS beyond the Iraq border or for instance supplying still through Saudi Arabia, through Qatar, other Gulf states arms to Al Qaeda forces and its allies in the name of supporting the so-called Free Syrian Army. So the, U the US role would, could also could also be that of not wanting any peace in Syria, not even talking about it, but instead wanting the war to continue. Looking at Israel's interests, looking at US geostrategic interests, that could be a possible line that it could take up. Under Trump, will this line change? We really don't know. This has been Obama's position. This has been, some, in some sense, the 
continuity of the West's position in West Asia, break up the countries, particularly those that pose a threat to Israel. So we really have to see whether Trump would change policies or he would be uh, unpredictable to the extent of either wanting peace or more war. We really don't know. Uh, the last point is, I think it also depends a lot on Turkey-US relationships. Now, it's also clear that the coup attempt against Erdogan was seen by Erdogan and the AKP in Turkey as a threat posed by the United States to the kind of policies they were building. So, they have turned against NATO for policies they have really broken in the US right now in, in foreign policy terms and they have therefore tried to work out some modus vivendi with Russia, with Saudi Arabia, with uh, Syria, uh, Syrian government which un till very recently and even after their so-called reapproachment with Russia, they have been talking about that Bashar al-Assad should go. So they haven't really changed their fundamental position but it does appear that they have broken at least significantly on the question of Syria with the United States and with NATO. Will that also last? Will they also come back again uh, to the NATO fold? Will they break with Russia again? That's a big imponderable because at the moment Erdogan is a bit like Trump. We do not know which way he's going to swing. Thank you, Praveer, for talking with us on this topic and uh, we will have more interviews as it proceeds. This is all the time we have on News Click. Thank you for joining us.